You're watching WSB Now's Access Atlanta, your source for local things to do, weekend events, travel destinations, and so much more. Watch and discover how to make the most of your weekend. Get ready for a fun, exciting weekend in Atlanta. First up, the Uncorked Atlanta Wine Festival. Enjoy over 50 varieties of wine and craft beer tastings, music performances, and fun wine-themed activities. Food will be available for purchase and tickets are $60 at the door. Don't miss Monster Jam at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, a total action-packed live event on four wheels where world-class drivers compete right in front of your eyes. Monster Jam features spontaneous entertainment and intense competition featuring the most recognizable trucks in the world. Ticket prices vary. Come on out to Virginia Highlands for the Beads and Booze event. Hotspot favorites like Fontaine's, Neighbors, Dark Horse Tavern will participate in this not-to-be-missed New Orleans-themed event. Tickets are $30 week of event. Head to the Marietta Theater Company and take in a performance of Five Course Love, a tasty treat of a musical comedy. Three actors play 15 different characters in five different restaurants on the hunt for one true love. General admission is $25. Rain or shine, experience Atlanta's original 33rd annual Oyster Fest at the Steamhouse Lounge. Enjoy roasted and fried oysters, live music, and more. Cost is $25 for both days. Now you have everything you need to make the most out of your weekend in the ATL. Enjoy. Jerry White is conducting a musical. Taking these children's train of thought on a journey from Savannah to Columbus. The Peach Tape Flyer is our mini musical, and I thought of it as a vehicle that could take us across the state to learn about some historical African American figures. It's a trip filled with catchy songs. Every lyric is crafted to entertain and educate. Well, the most important thing is as compared to learning about national or international African-American people, we specifically wanted it to target to Georgia. We live in a really diverse world, and we want kids to see themselves in the museum, but also to learn about others. The interactive approach towards Black History Month education extends into every corner of the Atlanta Children's Museum. Kids who come to visit the Children's Museum learn in all different kinds of ways. One of the ways they learn is learn through listening, so listening to the play or the musical or the story time, but they also learn by doing. So it's really exciting for them to go into the Build It Lab and learn how to build with pulleys and things that the inventor Alexander Miles used to develop the open and closed doors on the elevator. And up at the Science Bar, they learn about some of the scientists who are fabulous, who did all kinds of great things in advanced science. And then when they go to the art studio, they can hands-on learn how to create some of the things that great African-American artists did. Artists like Alma Thomas. A lot of her work was about color and feeling, so we're really having the kids explore their feelings by using brightly colored strip to imitate her art. It's art imitating life as children discover stunning combinations of color. Well, it's very important, especially for black youth, to be able to have role models to look up to and for all kids in general to know that the art world is another place of equality. Everybody up! Jane says opening young minds to the benefits of diversity and inclusion today is the first stop in a journey towards a brighter future for all. One of the things about children is you sort of tuck things in the back of your brain that you learn when you're little. So what I'm hoping is they get older, they go, oh wait, I learned about that person when I was at the Children's Museum. And they make those connections to the larger picture of American history as they grow older. You may be trying to impress a special someone or some in-laws. Me, I'm just trying to stun on the gram. Come on, let's go make some Instagram pasta. Well, we are here with Mike Patrick, chef owner of Stigger Fresca. How's it going, Mike? Very good. Excellent, excellent. Um, so can you tell us where we are? We're at Historical Fresco Pasta, the commissary kitchen for a restaurant and uh, for everything from Delta Airlines to uh, wholesale accounts. Mike, tell me a bit, what can people get from Strico Fresco? What, what are all the different things that y'all offer? So here at Strico Fresco, uh, we do all different kinds of stuff. So uh, in our restaurant, it's also an Italian grocer, uh, which is essentially called an almentati in Italy. So we offer all kinds of charcuterie, cheeses, eggs, produce, fresh pasta. And on top of that, we have a full-blown bar uh, and lunch and dinner. So it's basically 
a lot of stuff. Now on top of that, we also service uh, Delta Airlines for 18 different countries. We also service uh, 22 wholesale accounts uh, in the area as well too. We also do pasta making classes, uh, which are growing a little bit faster than I even expected, but we also have the pasta making classes. So in addition to the grocery part, what brings people out to the pasta classes? They want to feel something, they want it to be tangible, they want to be able to work with their hands. Uh, at the end of the day, I think really that's that great communal thing that we have in life is working with each other, having fun, talking about it, and actually producing the product. Well, I think it's time to make some pasta. What do you think? Sounds great. Thanks, Mike. Let's do it. Grab a glass of wine, head back there, and we'll make a lot of pasta. So in front of us, we have double zero flour, which is a fine bread flour, essentially, also a pasta making flour, and also a pizza making flour. But then we mix that with a little bit of semolina. So what we're gonna do right here, this is a classic method, right? So we call this the volcano method. And you're gonna take your little nice plastic fork right here, and we're gonna create a little cavern. And it's gonna go all the way down to the table. So take your eggs, and start cracking them in. This is your trash can in front of you. You want a nice, bright, orange egg yolk. I'm here with my fellow students, Amy and Zeke. Did you all have a good time in the class? We had a great time we did, in the we class. Did. did you have fun? I had a blast. I sweat a little bit, but I had a blast. <laughs> so do you think that you all will bring this back home and make some pasta of your own? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. We're going to take it home and do it with all three of our kids. We're going to set up the island in the kitchen and put everything out and try to show them how to make pasta. That is going to be a flour-dusted affair. It is going to be a mess, <laughs> but it'll be a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Okay guys, I'm gonna be here for a while, so why don't you find out a bit about how to sign up and make some pasta your own. So I'm here with Amanda Kiza, how are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. How do people sign up for the class? Uh, so the best way I tell people is to actually also get our weekly email. Um, you can sign up online at our website, uh, www.storicofresco.com. There's also a tab in there for pasta classes as well. Um, and you can see the differentiation. We have two types of classes on there, and then you can register on there as well. It's super automated, really easy, and then next you'll be here, so. Excellent, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Well, now I'm easily the most eligible bachelor in Atlanta. If you're trying to learn how to make some pasta, check out strigofresco.com. Practice Atlanta, I'm Ben Brash. Becky Brinkman is convinced it's the world's most unique flower. What's an orchid? You know, orchids are probably the most over-the-top uh, group of flowering plants that there are. Becky is the manager of the Atlanta Botanical Gardens Fuqua Orchid Center, a greenhouse filled with plant diversity that overwhelms the senses. Sensational colors, fragrances, they have everything in an over-the-top measure. Orchid Days is the garden's annual winter indoor plant exhibition. So while the weather outside may be frightful, inside it's warm and delightful. Orchid Days 2020 is a celebration of Latin American orchids. Vivid colors combined with the vision of a famous architect create one-of-a-kind enclosed garden spaces. We drew our inspiration for the show from the works of uh, the renowned Mexican architect Luis Barragan, who is one of the most influential modernist architects of the 20th century. Barragan's use of shadow and light enhances the flower's beauty, while crisp, clean contours help blur the lines between home and garden. My favorite part of the show is the sea of blue orchids in the atrium. Blue is a pretty rare pigment in flowers. There are only a handful of orchid species that even approach true blue. Orchid Days gives guests an entirely new perspective on one amazing plant. It creates a really unique environment uh, for orchids. It, it complements them and sets them off well. We just want visitors to have fun. We want a, them to come in and have a terrific experience on a cold winter day to experience warmth, beautiful colors, fragrances, and just be happy to be alive.
When the lights illuminate this grand stage in historic Lawrenceville, it's hard to believe Aurora Theater's humble beginnings. There is no good way to put on a production in a hardware store. Anthony Rodriguez co-founded the theater company in 1996 at an old storefront in Duluth. We had scenery that could be no taller than eight feet. The heat was exorbitant. Our air conditioning bill was outrageous. Cramped conditions at the old shop brought unique challenges and some unexpected benefits. And the great thing is you form friendships. People know who they sit beside when they come to the theater. It wasn't just what was on stage that kept audiences coming back. Welcome back. Thanks Thank for so coming. Much. It's the handshakes, the eye contact, the personal connections that make it special. Whenever we could meet people, we did. The popularity led Ann and Anthony to trade low ceilings and bad AC for the exposed brick and ornate lighting. Renovating this old church into a 250 seat theater in the quiet town of Lawrenceville. There were no restaurants here when we came, but a corner diner. We're now the second largest professional theater in the state, and we're growing by leaps and bounds every day. And the theater's success helped set the stage for the city's growth. Almost $400 million of new construction at one time is happening in the city of Lawrenceville. We didn't do all of that. We helped to inspire some of it. Now the theater is set to grow again with a $31.2 million expansion. They're going to be able to engage with art and be able to engage with each other simply in a way that we haven't been able to offer before. Creating a cultural gathering place for the community. <music> while keeping the personal touches that made the Aurora so successful. I think you always have to remember where you came from. I think what is so incredibly humbling is to watch everybody say, we're a part of this. Here's a look at what's doing good in Georgia. Bring hope to homelessness. Spend a morning in the cold for those who live in it. Atlanta Mission's race to end homelessness is February 22nd in downtown Atlanta. The Atlanta Jewish Film Festival comes to local theaters February 10th through the 27th. Get $2 off select family-friendly films using promo code fam to fam An Atlanta favorite returns to the fabulous Fox Theater. Get $10 off select tickets to Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater on Family to Family Night, February 20th. And brave the Arctic temps of Ackworth Beach to support Special Olympics Georgia athletes. The Polar Plunge is Saturday, February 22nd. Get the chilling details and all the info on these events at WSBTV.com slash community. Curling, we all saw it at the Winter Olympics, but if you're like me, you thought, how hard could that sport really be? And why is it even considered a sport? Well, I have a feeling I'm in for a rude awakening as I join the Atlanta Curling Club here at the Center Ice Arena in Sandy Springs. The group offers lessons to anyone daring to try every Friday night. So let's go. When you arrive, everything is set up. All you have to do is put on your shoe covers and step on the ice. If you're not quite sure of your footing, no, uh, we can definitely put these on. Um, these are just a little extra grippiness. All right. Generally for curling, we have special curling shoes, but you can also just wear sneakers. Oh, these are way typically. better. Now, the other things we have is obviously a broom, um, which you'll use to sweep in front of the stone. Yep. I got that move down, guys. Got that move down. <laughs> you're also handed a step-on slider, which does exactly what it sounds like. Helps you slide. And believe it or not, most of your weight is going to be on that <laughs> as you slide. Oh, dear Lord. All right, so step <laughs> off that. Tell me the point of curling. Like, what am I actually trying to do? So the point is to get more of your stones closer to the center of this big target area than okay. your opponent. And it scores kind of like bocce. You get a point for every one of your stones that's closer than your opponent's nearest stone. Gotcha. I just try to lift this sucker up. It is... <laughs> <laughs> How much do these things weigh? So, in general, they weigh about 42 pounds. 42 pounds, all right. Now, I'm holding this broom. Mm -hmm. What is sweeping for? So, sweeping makes a stone go further, and it makes it go straighter. I feel like that's the big calorie burner in this sport. It is. Um, you actually walk about two and a half, three miles or whatever. Because oh, nice. you're going back and forth over two hours, like 64 times. Like, there a you lot. go. If you want to work out, come curling. <laughs> <laughs> 
with a little demo, it was time to curl. It's in play, right? That would have made it if I swept the whole way. So basically, you slept. Because it would have gone further. Yeah. So it wasn't my fault. No. <laughs> Always blame the sweepers. They make it look a lot easier at the Olympics, um, but it's definitely fun. It's a little bit shakier than I thought it would be, uh, but it's also a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so you'd recommend this to other people? Absolutely. What I also learned, curlers like to celebrate. You're about to learn about broom stacking. I'm not quite sure what that is. So Dan, tell us what broom stacking and curling is. So broom stacking is kind of a fancy curling word for tailgating. And after every game, both teams go and have a pint or a beverage. I love broom uh, stacking. <laughs> most people do. That just sounds bad. It's <laughs> If you want to learn how to curl here at the Details Friday Night Center Ice Arena, $30 for a two-hour lesson, second game free. You're watching Access Atlanta on the WSB Now app, your source for local things to do. The, the iFly here in Atlanta is the first iFly in Georgia. There are 25 of them in the United States now, and uh, it's, it's a very unique facility. Uh, obviously, there's no other experience like it, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun. What happens when you come in here to iFly Atlanta is uh, we're going to be floating on a wall-to-wall -wall cushion of air. So it's simulating the free, free fall portion of skydiving, and uh, but you're not moving, the, the air is, so you're basically uh, uh, floating, uh, it's sort of like weightlessness, and um, you know, it's actually like flying, because you're floating in here, you're not touching anything, you can go up, you can go down. Um, so for us, it's delivering the dream of flight to Atlanta. My awesome instructor told me how to go in, you put your arms up, um, and you just kind of belly flop into it and then you stay in that position. There are um, signs to tell you whether you need to relax or bend your legs, straighten your legs, um, keep your chin up. That was probably the hardest thing for me to remember because you sort of just automatically want to look down because you're not standing on the ground. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of stayed like that and he was able to, you know, keep me in check if I started getting up too high or too low. So. So the best thing about iFly is that anyone can do it. It's for ages 3 to 103 and it's fun for the whole family. Uh, we're located in Smyrna opposite the new Brave Stadium. The address is 2778 Cobb Parkway and our open hours are from 10am to 10pm Monday through Thursday and slightly extended hours on the weekends. Uh, when you book your flight time, you'll need to arrive an hour before that. Uh, there's a registration and check-in process, sign the waiver, get your wristband. Then there's also a 30-minute class. We all watch a video, learn the body position, get to practice the body position so you know what to expect. Then for the class, we'll have up to 12 flyers in the class, and you'll get two flights during that class. There's also a high flight option, which you saw Becca do as well, where the instructor takes you up into the tunnel and back down. And that's easily the best part of the whole experience if you do decide to take that option, because you really get that sensation of flying, uh, which is, is my favorite thing. Being able to go up and down, float around the tunnel, um, yeah, it, it's certainly a, a, a very special feeling. So at the end um, of the second time that I went, we got to do the high flight, which is where uh, my instructor took me up in the air. and. Uh, that was amazing, and um, it really felt like I was flying. Um, and I can see how doing this would be very addictive because as soon as I did that, <laughs> I was just like, this is, this is incredible. I never felt anything like that before. Unlike usual sports fans, golf lovers aren't cheering from the stands nonstop. 
Golf is a quiet game, but what if I told you you could turn up the excitement just a notch? I'm Nadja Parker with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and I'm ready to show you behind the scenes of one of Atlanta's top attractions, Top Golf. I'm here now with Brian. He's the director of sales at Top Golf. Right now, we're in the bar area of Top Golf. Now, run down some of the fun things on the menu. What can people look forward to eating? We try to do things that are a little bit different, uh, add a little bit of the Top Golf flair to it. Uh, one of our most popular signature items is going to be mushi. Um, so it's our take on sushi. So think uh, okay. Mexican sushi. Um, it's going to be rolled up, served like sushi, uh, chicken, drunken beans, and rice. Uh, really creative and sliced and served just like a sushi dish. From the dessert side of things, we have our signature injectable donut holes. Think cinnamon sugar donuts that you self-inject either Barbarian cream, chocolate, or raspberry uh, injectors in it. Really cool. All right, it is time. This might actually be my favorite part of the night. Let's dig in here. Matter of fact, I don't even think I need the, my knife and fork. Mm. Okay, I still have some room for dessert, so let's get into these injectable donut holes. Let's see. I'm gonna go with chocolate. Ooh, yes. It's really nice and crispy on the outside, but when you get to the inside, you get to all that good fluffiness and chocolate on the inside. It's so good. We're now here with Elena. She is the director of instructions. So please help me out. For somebody who has never touched a golf club, what kind of services do you offer for beginners? For my beginners, I always like to work from the ground up. So I will work with alignment, setup, posture, grip, um, basic the fundamentals to start with. And once we get those down, then we can start working on positions and more technical stuff. But really just getting somebody comfortable with holding a golf club and actually uh, wanting to come back and play golf is one of my biggest goals when I work with beginners. I don't necessarily like to have one structured golf swing that I teach to everybody. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well help me find my individualized golfing swing. I All think right. I'm ready to do I got this. You. Let's get this going. <laughs> okay. okay. practicing on my swing because I haven't perfected it just yet. So I'm going to see you all later. I'm Nadja Parker with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Bye for now. African American history is American history. Kalinda Lee is passionate about the lessons we can learn from our past. The work that, that happened 100 years ago is just really groundwork for the work that we're engaging today. This exhibit she helped curate at the Atlanta History Center explores an often overlooked time in American history. When we're looking at African American history, we have a tendency to jump right from emancipation to civil rights, as if people weren't fighting for civil rights in the hundred years that intervened. The exhibition, Black Citizenship in the Age of Jim Crow, originated in New York, and new local elements were added for its debut here in Atlanta. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by how much Atlanta history has been left out of the textbooks. With help from the High Museum, Clark Atlanta University, and the Georgia Museum of Art, the expanded exhibition helps show Atlanta's place in history. Rolling out one-of-a-kind pieces like this rare flag carried by an all-black Civil War regiment. We're kicking and screaming. You are not helping. Programming also includes performances like Walking Through the Valley. We're hoping they'll get an idea that the legacy of the Civil Rights Movement is much more complex and much richer than we are normally uh, told in history books. The play follows a young John Lewis as he writes his historic 
March on Washington speech. What I didn't expect was the way that history would use me to answer those questions. Having a live audience experience something at the same time is a totally different experience than watching even a film. Through exhibitions, plays, and one-of-a-kind relics, the Atlanta History Center welcomes visitors to discover the past and explore new perspectives. Those folks did not stop ever agitating for their rights. They did not stop raising their voices. And perhaps we can learn from their examples 